So I have a pretty cool and interesting video that we're going to conduct this weekend. So as you can see, I have the trailer, I have the Cybertruck, and what I'm going to do is when we get to our campsite, I'm going to plug the trailer into the Cybertruck, and I want to see how long can the Cybertruck actually power the trailer, and that's going to give us a good indication as to if you're going to go boondocking and you want to use your Cybertruck as your power source for your travel trailer, what that's going to look like, how many days can you actually last. Obviously, everybody's usage is different, but this is just kind of a good test as to um, how long can you power an RV with a Cybertruck. So, let's get going. Okay, we're here at the campsite and we need to plug the trailer into the Cybertruck. So I went ahead and plugged this in already. It's in the trailer. Let's go ahead and bring this over. Okay, we're all plugged in. Let's turn the outlets in the bed on. All right, so we're gonna turn the outlets on. You can see we're drawing 0.6 kilowatts. We wanna turn on keep on cabin and bed outlets. Outlets will remain on for 12 hours. There we go. And it's powering the trailer. So I'm gonna go ahead and start turning things on and kind of get everything set up. And then we'll come back and we'll look at what kind of power usage it's pulling at that point. Okay, so the trailer is right there. We have both ACs on. Um, and I wanna see what the energy looks like. So right now, there's 3.4 kilowatts being used and we have two ACs running on the trailer. So uh, right now, we have 182 miles and 57% battery left. So we'll go ahead and monitor this over the course of the day and the weekend. And I'll report back here and there to show you guys where we're at and how many hours have passed. And um, so right now for reference. So it's 4.56 p.m. on Friday. We leave here on Sunday morning. So um, this is gonna run all night, all day tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday morning. All right, so it's 7.18. It's been about, I don't know what, two and a half hours since we first plugged in the trailer into the Cybertruck. Let's go ahead and check. We turned off the AC units because it's later in the day. Uh, no need for the AC anymore on the trailer. So let's just go ahead and see what the trailer is drawing now. So now it's only drawing 0 0.3 kilowatts. And that's because we really don't have much running in the trailer right now. All that's running are the two refrigerators and that's it. Let's also look at the battery. So two and a half hours and we're at 52% and we have 164 miles. So, so it used a bit of battery, but that's mainly due to the fact that we were running the two ACs in the trailer. Now that those are off and more than likely we'll probably stay at that 0 0.3, 0 0.4 kilowatt usage for the remainder of the night. I'm sure it's going to not drain as much and we'll see what it's at in the morning. So it's 8.57 in the morning, obviously because the outlets turn off after 12 hours. Um, we don't have any power right now, so came in the car, want to just turn it on. So we're drawing 1.5 kilowatts. Go ahead and hit that so it stays on for 12 hours. So it must have turned off around 4.55, 5 a.m. Um, because that's when we turned it on, p.m., the, the day before. So right now, at roughly 9 a.m., 123 miles, 39%. So I wanted to take a minute just to kind of go over why I think this test is a good test. Number one, from the simple fact and reasoning of 
I think because the Cybertruck has the 240 outlet in the bed of the truck, it's just a good test to see how long can you power something like a travel trailer, something that has multiple ACs, has multiple refrigerators, um, has a lot going on inside for somebody, and or in my case, a family to live in for an extended period of time. I posted a YouTube short when we were out at the campsite and I got a lot of questions as to why was I doing this test? It makes no sense. You already have power there. Why are you using your Cybertruck? Well, number one, it's a test, right? But number two, and probably the biggest reason and the biggest question I had when I took delivery of the Cybertruck and I knew it had the 240 in the, in the bed of the truck and I thought of, Hey, can I power my travel trailer with the Cybertruck? The biggest, biggest thing was, so I'm going to give you a little story. Back in July of 2023, so last summer, we take our annual trip to the river where we rent sea dues, rent boats. We get out there on the water. We're there for three, four, five days. The kids have a blast because we're out on the water all day, every day. And it's never been an issue in the years that we've been doing it. Well, unfortunately, last year when we were there, we were there for 4th of July. My son actually had heat exhaustion. And 4th of July night, we were in the emergency room. It was so bad that he didn't know his name. He didn't recognize any of us. He had no idea what was going on around him. He was asking a lot of strange questions, questioning who we were, what things were. Uh, when I, I was rushing him to the hospital, he didn't even know what we were in. You know, we were in our car, in our truck. He had no idea what it was. He was asking us, what is this? What, what is this thing that we're in? Um, he was looking at the navigation screen and it's showing a map. And he was asking questions as to what that was and, and why is it there? And. So it was a very, very scary situation. And I attribute part of that uh, issue, obviously hydration and being out in the sun and, and all that is a part, right? And, and a big part. But the campsite that we were at only had 30 amp power. So we were only able to run one AC in our travel trailer, which meant, and it was probably 100 and. 18 degrees outside every day, which meant with only one AC running at full blast inside the travel trailer, we were only able to get the temperature down to maybe 95, 98. That's still extremely hot. So we didn't have a, a way to cool him down, you know, because when he was outside and we started seeing these symptoms, we took him inside, put ice on him and, and try to cool him down. But once again, even taking a cold shower, it wasn't really cold because the water's hot, right? Because it just, it being outside exposed to that type of heat, it, 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 the water is just not cold. So there was really no way for us to cool them down. And so going back to the Cybertruck, I think about it. And when I took delivery, I started thinking that if I would have had the Cybertruck on that trip, I would have been able to run both of my ACs when at that campsite and been able to keep the temperature of the travel trailer down to, you know, maybe even in the high 70s or, or low 80s. But that's a huge difference when you're talking about almost 120 degrees outside. So for all those people that are questioning, why are you doing this? It makes no sense. If you have power at your campsite, why would you use your Cybertruck to power your travel trailer or your RV? That's the reason. Um, you know, we had a very scary situation to where I truly believe that if I had the Cybertruck there, yeah, maybe I couldn't have powered the trailer that whole trip. But maybe in that moment when he was having those symptoms um, initially, Prior to making the decision of taking them to the emergency room, we could have put both ACs on because I would have been able to plug the trailer into the Cybertruck and that could have possibly helped him. Um, or even so, you know, powering for the whole trip, the Cybertruck powering the travel trailer and me running to a supercharger every day to, to continue that going. But, 
you know, I, I just think that for anybody who doesn't camp or RV, um, they may not know that, that not every campsite, number one, has power. Not every campsite has the power that you need. My travel trailer requires a 50 amp breaker and it requires a 1450 plug. Um, there's adapters, obviously, which is what I used on that camping trip, but I'm stepping it down, right, to use a 30 amp breaker. And when I'm at 30 amps, I'm unable to use both ACs. I'm unable to use all of my appliances all at once. So you're having to make a sacrifice. But if you have the Cybertruck, the capability of plugging in, you know, you're able to get around that issue, right? And you're able to go to a campsite that maybe only has a 30 amp. And if it's extremely hot, you're able, you have that option to plug your trailer RV into your Cybertruck and maximize your power and be able to use all of your appliances. And for me, that would have been a huge, huge thing for us last year when we were at the river. Um, I mean, I have right here, just to kind of show you guys, uh, the bill from the emergency room, which was almost $2,600, you know? So obviously the most important thing was my son's health. And that was a huge scare for us, for my wife and I, and for the extended family that was there. But you know, even on top of that, the cherry on top is, you know, weeks later you get a bill for $2,600 and you're sitting there going, okay, if I had a cyber truck, most importantly, would that have necessarily happened to my son? Yes. He was out in, in the water. He was out in the sun. Maybe he didn't drink enough. He didn't stay hydrated enough. That's all understandable. I understand that that's a huge, huge reason why he had heat exhaustion, but also I feel like if we had a place for him to be inside a trailer at a decent temperature, you know, to cool off throughout the day, that would probably help as well. So, you know, once again, for all those people that are questioning, why, why did you do this test? It makes no sense. What, well, this is the reason why. Just wanted to share that information and, and share that with you guys, because anybody that RVs, anybody that camps will understand that. People that don't will question. And so I just wanted to be transparent and share that information with you guys. So I think this is the end of the road. As you can see, the outlets are still on, but I have 21% of battery left. I do know that at 20%, it'll shut down in an effort to not have the trailer lose power and obviously the refrigerators and air conditioning and everything turn off. What I'm gonna do is just unplug it as you can see, it's 6, 17 p.m. So I believe that we started this test at 4.55 yesterday. So it's been 25 hours of powering the trailer. Once again, at about five o'clock in the morning, it shut off because of the limit of 12 hours. And that was off for about four hours. So as of right now, if we're saying 25 hours, it's been running, but those we lost those four hours. It powered the trailer for 21 hours. So what I'm gonna do now is dig into the numbers and just kind of figure out and show you guys how much power we used, how long we used it for, and if we went from 100% um, down to 20, how many hours roughly could we power our trailer? Now remember, keep in mind, that this is based off of my usage. Obviously, every situation is different. You know, if you're in a hotter climate, you're probably running your AC throughout the night. If you're in a cooler climate on a cooler day, maybe you're not even running the AC. So now you'll be able to power for much longer than I was able to. So this is just an experiment. We're just kind of running some tests. Just kind of wanted to show everybody what I came up with and I think what I want to do is at some point do a boondock true test with this and um, really find out what we're able to do. But let's go ahead and dive into those numbers. All right. So what you can see here is we started off the test with 57%. We got down to 21%. So we used a total of 36% of the battery. 
if you break down the battery, which is 123 kilowatt hours, that'll give you 1.23 kilowatt hours per 1% of energy. So if we were to then get the 1.23 and multiply that by 36%, we get 44.28 kilowatt hours of total used power. If we get that number and divide it by 21, total hours of usage, we get a number of 2.1 kilowatt hours of used power per hour. Because the Cybertruck limits you to only 80% when using the outlets, we know that that is a total of 98.4 kilowatt hours of total battery available to those outlets. So if you get that 98.4 and divide that by 2.1 that gives us a total of 46.9 total hours of power but please keep in mind this is the usage for this particular trip and for my particular trailer and the weather conditions that we experienced this weekend this is obviously going to change everyone's usage is going to be different